This presentation of Digital Habitats Part 2 Literacy will focus on Chapter 6, Community Orientations, Activities, and Tools. Chapter 6's focus is on the community orientations of activities and tools. The book defines an orientation as a typical pattern of activities and connections through which members experience being a community. This chapter defines nine orientations. The first orientation is about meetings. Meetings assert a community's existence. They can be face-to-face -face or blended, online synchronous at the same time but in different places, or online asynchronous at different times and places but with a time-limited focus. Signs of life of meetings are regular, well-attended meetings. The key success factors of meetings are that they have appropriate rhythms over time that fit the lives of the members. The meeting practices are defined, such as agendas and facilitation. There is attention to the experience of the individual member's participation and flexibility in the schedule. The second orientation is open-ended conversations. This includes single-stream discussions, such as loose discussions all in one thread, including emails, lists, or chat rooms, multi-topic conversations, which are about distinct topics but may include multiple threads, and distributed. These include blog posts, comments, emails, social networking, and instant messages. Signs of life of open-ended conversations are sustained flow of contributions and responses. Success faster factors include variance in topics to keep it interesting, enough contributions to feel active but not, not overwhelming, active participation by a representative segment of the community, and well-organized archives and conversation. Orientation three is about projects. It includes co-authoring, practice groups, which is focus on an area of interest, project teams, which may be temporary but accomplish a specific task, and instruction, which are structured learning activities. Signs of life of projects include committed engagement, developing artifacts, and responding to challenges. Key success, success factors include collective definition of practices, coordination and leadership, and adequate communication between subgroups and communities. These can include wikis, Google Docs, and Google Docs. Orientation four is about content. Content are useful resources for members. They can attract new members and offer the community's expertise. It includes libraries, Structured self-publishing, where members can contribute to stru structured objects with consistent format and data fields. Open self-publishing and content integration. Signs of life include regular creating or identifying of new material and frequent downloads or use of existing material. Key success factors include careful and ongoing organization of content, growth and evolution, ease of publishing internally or to the public, archiving of aging material, use of tools that invite involvement, and excellent search capabilities. Orientation 5 is about the access to expertise the community offers. It includes access via questions and requests, direct access to explicitly de designated experts, shared problem solving, knowledge validation, which are responses when responses or artifacts are rooted to members, and apprenticeship and mentoring. Signs of life include rapid and reliable responses to requests for expert advice and assistance. Key success factors. The experts are known. Access to information is quick and reliable, and the responses are reliable. Orientation 6 is about relationships. This part of the community emphasizes inter the interpersonal aspects of learning together. It puts a high value on knowing each other personally. It includes connecting, knowing about people, and interacting formally. Signs of life include networking, bonding, and friendship references to personal lives. Key success factors, ways for people to get to know each other, opportunities to connect informally beyond organized participation in communities, networkers act as connectors, and having individual control over personal exp experiences. Orientation 7 is about the individual participation. It includes varying and selective participation, can accommodate varying forms of participation. Personalization, members can individualize their experience. Individual development, community can help individuals develop their own learning and multi-membership. 
Signs of life include that members de develop their own style of participation. Key success factors include that diversity is valued, that there are different levels and modes of participation that are supported and facilitated, that there are preferences and availability of multi-membership, and that customization options are obvious and understood. Orientation 8 is about community cultivation. It includes democratic governance, and perhaps members have a voice in how it's run, a strong core group, members who habitually participate, internal coordination. There's a small team assigned to take on responsibility of cultivating the community, and external facilitation. Perhaps there's a community cultivation expert. Signs of life include the activities are well planned and materials are well produced and organized. Key success factors. Their efforts are appreciated. There's time to cultivate. People have cultivation roles and there's planning for tra transitions in the future. Finally, there's orientation nine, serving a context. This is central to a community's identity. It includes organization as context, cross organizational context, constellation of related communities, interaction with other communities, and a public mission. Signs of life include that community members are engaged in their mission. Key success factors. There's clarity on community context and its implications. There are recognized and supported boundary rules that serve the orientation to context. Also, there's interaction with outsiders. Overall, chapters four, five, and six give the full landscape of tools and features of digital habitats and how they come together to support a community.